In my interactions with uh, certain types of antinatalists, I notice a powerful degree of puritanism of the sexual variety. Um, the sex drive is described in terms that seem to deliberately cheapen it, deliberately degrade it. Uh, people's mothers are insulted, people's sex partners are insulted or referred to in the most base and uh, vile ways. In other words, um, any sort of relationship that you have sexually with another individual is for the worst possible and most uh, animalistic reasons. Um, the subliminal assumption there is sex is something disgusting, sex is something sinful, because sex is where new people come from. Therefore, um, sex, it is implied, is something slimy, primordial, and uh, perpetuating the evil of this world. It's perpetuating the life addiction. Sex itself is foul. Um, as I say, uh, human relationships are generally referred to, oh, your mother got drunk and got laid, and that's where you came from. None of this business, which is what probably happened, um, one's parents were in the mood and they um, decided they were going to do it, and um, boom, nine months later along came somebody. Um, it was almost certainly a foul, disgusting uh, act that took place, a, a very sordid thing in a very sordid circumstance. The per perpetual repetition of things like rape and pedophilia that come up constantly in the uh, in the antinatalist discourse um, make one wonder what sort of attitudes towards sex these people have. It seems as though sex is something foul and even sinful. My favorite uh, description of sexual repression, uh, uh, deliberately applied, uh, comes from this book. I mentioned Catholic sexual repression in an earlier video, but um, this one is completely apolitical, and uh, it, it shows that, um, or sorry, irreligious, and it shows that um, that the sex uh, deliberate subversion or um, alteration of sex and the sex uh, drive is a tool for mind control, for social control, um, and for um, for exerting power over people. Julia, the female protagonist in the novel, is speaking to Winston, the male protagonist, and Julia is sort of the sexually, shall I say, liberated female who has uh, presided over the sexual and um, inadvertently the political awakening of the protagonist, Winston Smith. She says, when you make love, you're using up energy, and afterwards you feel happy and don't give a damn for anything. They can't bear you to feel like that. They want you bursting with energy all the time. All this marching up and down and cheering and waving flags is simply sex gone sour. If you're happy inside yourself, why should you get excited about Big Brother and all the three-year plans and the two minutes hate and all the rest of their bloody rot? That's Julia speaking. And to me, that's sexual sanity speaking. Um, if you just see your sex drive for what it is, and if you see uh, your normal biology for what it is, even if you're living a celibate existence, even if you're living a, um, uh, an existence in which you have decided not to procreate, but if you have a healthy attitude towards it, um, I think that it actually humanizes you. People who deliberately debase it, people who deliberately repress it, people who deliberately uh, caricature it as something pathologically vile, um, if you ask me, are not healthy human beings. They don't have a healthy view of sex, procreation, and um, the problems inherent in inhabiting a human body. It's just the old repression thing. The old don't masturbate or you're going to go blind. Um, it's the old um, only animals do that sort of thing. Um, in this context, in the context of using it as a tool against people who have uh, emotional problems, i.e. depression, it can be devastating. Sexual guilt as a means of control, yes, that's a reality. Thank you.